Hey everyone, welcome back to another deal analysis episode. My name is Chris Lopez, and today we'll be talking about a nine unit apartment building in Aurora, not too far off uh, from the Anschutz Medical Complex. So I have got my colleague Preston Nearbury on this episode with me. Preston, how's it going? It's going great, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Of course. And so Press and I, we're both agents at Eurocast Real Estate. We work at the Denver Investment Real Estate uh, website together. And so this is a property that we worked on together. And so the quick overview on here is, like I said, this is a great location, uh, just a few blocks away from the Anschutz Medical Complex. And if you guys don't know where that is, that's uh, at 225 and Colfax. So you got the VA hospital, you got Children's Hospital, and you got the CU Hospital. And it's just a huge, huge, you know, economic driver, uh, not just that part of town, but all over Colorado. They're one of the you know, biggest areas for economic development. So lots of stuff going on there. And, you know, there's a lot of change that neighborhood as well. So we really like that location just for if the numbers work well now. There's a lot of opportunity zones over there and there's lots of lots of upside. So this building, uh, I think it was built back in the 60s. It was actually originally a six unit apartment building, and there's a handful of these units over on the street. But a previous owner, not uh, from the seller we worked with or their seller, but someone I think back in the 90s, from what we could tell, had actually converted it to a nine unit and it had been approved by the city. So the seller we were uh, buying it from bought it about a year ago and was basically doing an apartment flip on there. And he bought it from a distressed owner who had bought it, I think, like nine months before and was just in way over his head. Uh, horrible management issues. They went through like three or four property managers, uh, really low rents. Uh, property was in really bad shape. And just the seller was not or that, that previous owner was not ready to handle those. So the seller we were working with, he rehabbed eight out of nine units. He brought up the rents to market rents, stabilized them. There was some funkiness in there from it being converted from a six unit to nine unit with some utilities. Like a couple of the units had zero control over the thermostat. Um, so they they remedied that by putting in baseboard heaters in those units that did not have their own separate heat. That way they could control it, not their next door neighbor. Uh, and then they also took care of splitting up electrical bills since there were six electrical meters and they were able to do that through the leases and with the property management. So they took out a lot of that quirkiness there to basically make it a, a true nine unit as best you can. Uh, but that way there was really you know no quirkiness there for the next owner and also for the tenants. So the profile here for our investor, um, you know, uh, basically they're looking for just long term rental assets for retirement planning. As you guys know, that's what a lot of our clients are looking for. And you know they're high high income earners, and they were really looking for a turnkey asset because they wanted to focus you know on their family and their careers, but they also wanted to start investing in real estate. So they had really realistic expectations for returns in the Denver market, and they knew uh, you know they knew what it was. And when they saw this deal come across, they were very excited because this is a better cap rate than we normally see out there for apartment buildings. So Preston, what did I miss here on the overview and the profile? Or did I miss anything? No, I think you nailed it pretty well, Chris. Um, you know, this property, as you said, was pretty unique, but uh, the sellers that uh, that we were working with um, really did a great job going through and rehabbing this property and getting it stabilized and, um, you know, just fixing all the things that needed to be sorted out with it to make it a good quality turnkey property. And that's what our client really, really liked about it. Yeah. And so we found this uh, property through networking. Um and so as with a lot of our multi-units, we're always talking to investors, other agents, and just knowing what's out there. So our buyer was not on 1031 exchange, so we didn't have those timeline considerations. But, you know, we're always just talking to people. As we started talking with this client, we said, hey, we know this property's coming up. might be a great match for you, just based off numbers and the amount of capital they were looking to deploy and their investor, uh, you know, what their investing return expectations were. So got it through networking. And the details on the property, it's a nine unit. And so there are two, two bedroom, one bathrooms, five, one bedroom, one bathrooms, and two studios. So nine units all together. And uh, basically it's like a, best way to describe it, I guess would be what a, a ranch style apartment building, Preston, is how you would describe it? That's even a real term. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a pretty good description. I mean, there were, you know, a couple units, yeah, a couple units that are, uh, you know, 
below grade um, underground, but all had egress windows. That was something else that uh, the sellers went in and did is make sure all the uh, below grade bedrooms were conforming and had uh, proper egress and all that kind of stuff. So um, really a good mix of, uh, of unit types in this property. Oh yeah, those egress windows were awesome. You could like drive a VW Bug through some of those. Um, yeah, they were huge. Yeah. So as we said, we really liked the location. It was uh, it's walking distance to the Anschutz Medical Complex, like three or four blocks away. Um, they are originally going to list it for around you know one point three nine million or so, give or take a few dollars. Uh, but since we were coming in, you know. Off market before it could make an easier transaction. We got in our contract for around one point three five uh, million, and also a twenty thousand dollar credit, which we'll talk about in a minute. So why we liked it? I mean, it's points we've already talked about. Great location with long term upside, walking distance to the medical campus, turnkey and updated, and it was right on the border of an opportunity zone. So the contract details. I'm pressed, and you were handling this one. Once you run us through this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, finding this property, as Chris said, you know, was kind of through our network. But uh, before putting this property under contract, we went out and looked at a couple others and really um, allowed our client to get get a feel for uh, for what the market was like and, and what a good opportunity this property was going to be. Um, so once we kind of narrowed all, all that down, we were able to, to go check this property out, walk it um, and, you know, really get a good feel for it. Um, you know, being that we knew the sellers, uh, was kind of one of those things we were able to put all the terms of the contract together in a uh, pretty quick and easy fashion. So that made life a lot easier on everybody. And that's kind of one of the, the things that we, uh, enjoy about doing these deals through our networks is it really makes the process go smooth. Um, and when it came to inspection stuff, um, you know, for the most part, it was all, uh, just kind of punch list items from the rehab and, uh, you know, nothing too, too crazy or out, uh, <clears throat> expensive that we were going to have to sort through. Um, you know, and just from tenants living in units after they'd uh, moved in and, and kind of sorting through some of that stuff. Um, one of the big things that came up was the property tax stuff. And I know you mentioned that in one of the previous slides, Chris. So um, as we kind of sorted to uh, move into the new year here, all the new property assessments started coming out for taxes. And this property, for some reason, had a huge jump in property taxes. So when we originally underwrote the property, um, we took into account, you know, what we expected the the new taxes to be, and they uh, basically uh, went up, you know, from about what was it, six thousand dollars, I think, Chris, to to over ten thousand. Um, so that really had a, a big negative impact on the returns and kind of how the numbers played out with this property. So, um, you know, the sellers went in and agreed to fix all the punch list items, all that kind of stuff, and in an effort to help combat some of the the increased property taxes they agreed to um, engage a lawyer to help fight the property tax bill and also gave our client a twenty thousand dollar credit um, to help kind of make the numbers work a little bit better yeah and actually that six that the taxes were the four thousands and we expected to be up around the six thousand range and then the actuals were like ten thousand change it was a huge huge jump um, so for the financing, we were using a local credit union, and by we, I mean our client. And so they were he, uh, they were doing a five-year arm. So that means a five-year fixed uh, interest rate, and that floats afterwards, and but still amortized over thirty years. And when you get above five units and more, all you can do is uh, arm products. They don't have thirty-year fixed. That's only for properties that are four units and less. So appraisal was at value, no issues. Seller concessions, as we mentioned, at twenty thousand dollars for the property taxes. So going into the rental analysis, again, these are screenshots from Joe's spreadsheet. And if you guys ever use Joe's spreadsheet, you know it's really designed for four units and less. So if you plug in certain numbers, um, you know, for financing, it'll say, "Hey, this won't work." Those are warnings that he's built in there because he only does residential loans that are 40 units and less. But in reality, it still adds and subtract numbers all the same. So we use it and just uh, cop or get rid of those couple of warnings. So if you're using it, um, it definitely works. And we typically use some more advanced spreadsheets when we underwrite these multi units. But as far as like trying to explain it over a webinar and a podcast, it's just much easier to use Joe's spreadsheet, which is much, much simpler and still hits on the main points of understanding what type of cash flow numbers you can expect on here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So <clears throat> in the number of units, I did select two. It is a nine unit apartment building, but Joe's only goes up to four. So we selected two because 
uh, field one is rents and field two is for rubs. So down payment is 25%. Plug in the purchase price of a uh, 1.35 million, about $20,000, $21,000 in total acquisition cost. And then when you take in the seller credit of $20,000, the total initial investment is just under about $340,000. <clears throat> this local credit union we work with has some really great interest rates. And so it'd be right around 3.875% over a 30 year uh, amortization. Again, that's five years of fixed, then it floats afterwards. So for unit one, this just shows total rents of all nine units. So, you know, two bedrooms will be slightly higher, uh, but altogether, the gross rental income is about $9,569 uh, for all nine units. Uh, in the item two there for rent field number two, that's $580. So that's for the rubs. That's the extra money that they are collecting from the tenants help cover water, sewer, trash, and those items. So all together, just over about $10,000 a month in rental and rubs income. So we plug in a 5% vacancy, 3% annual rent increase, 3% appreciation, and 35% uh, tax rate. Going on to the next section in the spreadsheet, the monthly operating expenses, we say yes to property management. Uh, and then we put in 8%. Now, the property managers in charge 7%. And we put up 1% one, uh, 1 more to round up for just a couple of our turnover cost. So for the monthly reserves, we usually underwrite a lot of multifamilies based off of like $800 per unit per year. And so backtracking it that actually comes out to 6.2%. And so the really interesting thing here is you'll see up here, we, we have $800 per unit per year for repairs and maintenance, and that's a 6.2% uh, maintenance reserves. And then at the very last slide I'm on here, we have reserves, uh, which we have way at $250 per unit per year. <clears throat> and those reserves are for longer term capital expenditure items, the water heaters, the windows, the, the roof deductibles, those types of items where it's not just, oh, I got to go in there and replace this or do this, but it's those longer term items that have to be replaced every five years, seven years, 10 years. So, and when you do underwriting for apartment buildings, those are always separated out and they're more numbers based than often percent based. But an interesting thing is that they often come out to be about 8% total of the rental income. So, a lot of times for quick underwriting, we'll still say 8% for uh, monthly reserves and repairs. And that also includes those longer term reserves as well. So just a really interesting thing to know because it's a balance we use so we don't get too detailed, uh, but it keeps things very simple. Uh, so 8% is about one month's worth of rent per year will go towards all this. So no HOA. Ooh, now getting down the property taxes. So as we talked about before, uh, in 2018, they were $4,000. We're expecting them to be in the, you know, $5,500, $6,000 range based off other properties we're seeing. But they jumped up to over just over $10,000. Um, so the seller, we didn't, you know, the sellers didn't realize this until after it was too late to do that initial contesting when they sent out the new notices. So nothing we could do for 2019, but they did engage a lawyer. The lawyer felt confident that they could or that he could get the uh, uh, tax reduced for the following year. And then hopefully every two years when it keeps going up, he'd be able to keep it in line. Because in reality, that $10,000 is just ridiculous compared to other properties. So, but it jumping up from a $4,000 to $10,000 tax rate, it dropped the cap rate by more than two tenths of a point. So that's how significant, even a few thousand dollars, it can impact the cap rate uh, that much. So annual property insurance, about $3,500 is the quotes we were seeing. Oops. Uh, water and sewer, $6,400 for the year. So about $365 a month uh, for the water and sewer. I'm sorry. And then the gas as well, uh, because it's one gas bill. And so that $6,400 was for all three of those water, sewer, gas. Trash is just in a $2,000 a year. Electric, that's all paid for by the tenants. And for landscaping, it is zero scape. It's a lot of concrete, uh, like in pea gravel, uh, and then hedges. So it's going to be mostly snow removal. And probably once you're, somebody needs to come out and trim a few hedges and rake some pea gravel, and it's done. So we're estimating about $750 a year for that because each snow removal is only about $70. 
So looking at the uh, final analysis, uh, the total expenses here are about $42,000 a year. Subtract out the mortgage payments, and that leaves you an annual cash flow of about $16,000 per year. So that puts it at a 4.9% cap rate. I'm sorry, a 4.9% cash on cash return and a 5.5% cap rate. So when we were originally underwriting it, we were expecting around a 5.8 cap rate or so. Um, and depending on how you underwrite it, you know, 5.8, five, 5.9 five, cap rate, we tend to be more conservative on repairs and maintenance and property management costs than a lot of the ways other people underwrite it. But then that taxes just dropped it from, you know, a 5.7, five, 5.8 five, down to a 5.5 5 cap rate. So, you know, that was, uh, that was a bummer there. But all together, this was a really, really good deal. Uh, and just unfortunately, with all the uh, coronavirus stuff going on, we actually had to terminate on this property. But we still wanted to do analysis on here because it shows you what the numbers are like, what type of multifamilies you can see out there in Denver. Uh, so it's just a great case study to still talk about. All right, so that wraps up here for this deal analysis. If you guys have questions, reach out to me. If you want a copy of the spreadsheet, just send me an email. We'll get it to you. If you need uh, help analyzing stuff, reach out to us. This is what me, Preston, and the rest of the team, this is what we do pretty much seven days a week. Uh, find properties, analyze them, and then hopefully get you into a good long-term rental property. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone.